Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at Dolus. Dolus is a software that, like the word implies, which means deceit, fraud, or evil intent in Roman, uh, Dolus is designed to deceive software. Now, you may think, and in fact this is why the developer reached out, well you already made a video on a product that does something like this. I did. This, from what I've been told, is a more advanced idea. So, let's install it and see what differentiates it. They initially approached me asking for a sponsored video. Now, I, I declined and said, first of all, let's just do an evaluation, then we can talk about a sponsored video, because I want to know if this is any good, uh, before I would recommend something. So let's try this out. Installation completed successfully. Now, this is a really odd installer. This actually looks like something I've seen in the Windows Experience Index. Okay, Dota. So, welcome back. Let's sign up. Now this is developed by a anime profile picture on uh, called Andrew, who uh, he's got good taste in anime, so I'm hoping that means he's got good taste in software as well. Okay, uh, this I don't know if it doesn't like the scaling. Uh, we could try changing that. Now one annoying thing is after you uh, buy the program, or if you're me and you were given a code, you can do it that way as well. Uh, you have to even though it's tied to an account, you have to enter a license key. To me, that's just a ridiculous piece of friction, but okay. So here we go. So now let's see what we can actually do. Now one of the cool features here is that you can actually write your own simulators. So let's see what these different ones do. So let's see what generic sandbox does. It creates sandboxy control, working directory, okay. Now one thing they've done is they've actually added custom executable attributes so that this will look far more like the real thing. So then we create Joe Box server, Joe Box control. This is for Joe's sandbox, sandbox here, PCSS, Ollie debug. Okay, that could, that, yeah, that's gonna give a pretty strong signal. Process hacker, that, that's not, that's not usually checked, but okay. Immunity debug. Okay, we get a lot of stuff here. TCB debunk, yeah. Reg shot, dump cap, wind debug, wire shot, yes, fiddler x64 debug roblox ain't gonna like that but okay wow and we even add registry keys so this is way more fleshed out than scarecrow now let's look at our task manager and see what these uh, different processes do okay so one giveaway is the process tree here does tell you but so far dolus detection and the resource usage here is definitely non-trivial how many calls have I given? That can't be right. It's possible that's a virtual machine issue, but that seems like way too much CPU is being used. These processes are here. There are some footprints. Oh, we got Ida. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely, it would take effort to detect this. It could be done, but it would take effort. Virtual box, so we can actually choose what kind of VM we want to look like. I would personally, if I was doing this, I would say you probably want uh, VMware and the sandbox one because that's the things that look for the most. So we can enable telemetry. Uh, we can actually, uh, because we have MITM proxy, we can find out what kind of uh, telemetry data is being sent. We can start this when we start up, activate, and these are to try and differ. Okay, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, developer mode, okay. Now let's just do a reboot with MITM proxy on to see what kind of data this is sending back and forth on startup. Because that could be alarming if it's too much, but let's find out. Okay, so first hit here is to catalog JSON. Let's see what that. Oh, that's just checking for updates. That's all very much normal. Oh, telemetry. So let's see. Event ID, process health, handle count, installation ID, private memory size, session ID. Eh, there's nothing in here that bothers me. And then we check the license. I mean, okay. Yeah, nothing, nothing really wrong here. Just usual license verification. I'm not gonna, probably not going to show that request uh, just in case. Oh, and do, do we duplicate that request? Okay, so we send, yeah, we send a, a bearer token and we get that information back. That, that's fair enough. This is probably to stop you from just setting uh, something bogus in there. I'm going to say how, but that's pretty easy to beat. And then we go, okay, module activated. So every time you turn on or off a module that is sent, but you just send a session ID, which is anonymous. And you can't turn this off. So, okay. Not a huge deal. And of course, the benefit of telemetry is that the developer can try and uh, use that to see which features people use. So, 
Uh, this is a sample that some people in my Discord actually found earlier today, and it's got pretty good anti-analysis. So let's see what it does, and if uh, Dolus has fooled it. First of all, it should, yep, it's working. Now, the theory is, and this is not always 100% uh, accurate, is that malware, when it detects a VM, what should happen, because malware does not usually detect a VM, it's not, it's not for the reason people think to escape or to cause havoc to the analyst. It's simply, uh, usually the biggest thing is to fool an automated sandbox by acting harmless if it detects the sandbox, so that the sandbox will say it's legitimate. So let's see if our friend is harmless. Well, we got to give it admin first. Okay. Uh, this payload will kill task manager if it does end up executed, but it's still executing. Okay. Now, let's see if we see... Oh, okay. That's bad, but maybe uh, the, the, stealer di the stealer didn't execute, so it's not, it's not the worst case. The anti-analysis and stealer doesn't execute, but the what we suspect is either a dropper or a Bitcoin miner does execute. I'm going to say it's, that's kind of a half win. Having run this uh, malware... Oh, no. Oh, did we just get... Okay, so we just got an, a termination error from that one. Oh, no, module 2 is running. And uh, the stealer, Camilla and Control, just ran. Quest. Okay, that's just going to be a hardware ID. Looks like uh, this stealer developer was smart enough to encrypt their payload. But judging by the number of hits, I'm going to go on a limb and say this is probably not just the uh, server-side VM checks. Now let's just see if we activate the VMware simulator, does that change anything? Because sandbox detection is on the newer side, and regular VM detection is somewhat more old school. So if we provide it with fake VMware tools, does it decide uh, that it doesn't like us anymore? Let's let's kill this module two. Oh, and then module three runs after two, right? And now let's just try running this again and see if we get a different error message. Okay, module one is seemingly running normally. Oh, and this is actually the same sample we already got. I'm just trying to find some potential different ones. Oh, these guys are making us join Discord. This could even be real. Finally, a different scam. The fact, uh, given how these how these uh, YouTube channels are now using the same link through YouTube, uh, it's become obvious how interconnected they really are and how few people are actually running this. So look, if any if anyone has ever been involved in any of these kind of campaigns and you want to talk, email me. I'd like I'd I'd love to hear from you. You know, it can be anonymous. Ain't trying to ain't trying to cause you trouble. I, I just would kind of want to know more about it. Oh, uh, the anti and uh, the anti task manager from the other payload ran. Uh, but okay, yep. So that definitely all worked. Uh, let's try out this one. So run installer.exe, and we can tell if it worked by looking at MITM proxy. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, the Luma Stealer worked. Now something I have learned from monitoring stealers a bit is. While the code executes, as long as you pass a simple check, they do either programmatically or manually before selling stealer logs, they usually will check for what looks like an analysis environment and chop it out because it might make them look bad. But that wouldn't, uh, that doesn't help us here. And if your computer is not an analysis environment, it wouldn't work. So, okay, so none of these worked. So uh, we can try the same thing we tried last time. A safe exam browser. Now, one of the advantages of Dolus that it has the ability, and that includes the ability to check to disable when you open a certain thing. So we can try that uh, as soon as we validate whether this will work. And uh, from looking at our MITM proxy logs, we are also now one of these samples has also started mining Monero. Safe exam browser is actually a weird product because the whole thing is open source, so we can actually see how it works and the checks in here are not sophisticated and they will be fooled the biggest problem with this kind of a, a, a program is the way that uh, like the malware does not use these checks persistently enough to be reliable now when you mix it with an antivirus it, it could provide you a bit of extra protection let's see okay so 
can we fix this? That's the big question. That's a weird error. Okay, so we successfully got rid of VMware, but we couldn't get rid of the other one. So does Safe Exam Browser now launch? So my guess is some of the malware we installed has broken this. Let's just try a reboot and see if that fixes anything. It's such a weird dialogue. I don't know if it's because of uh, whatever tech stack they chose. It's just buggy. Okay. Well, it is, it is uh, in preview. So let's look more at the settings we have. So here we can actually see how these modules are created. So, okay. So you can create these processes and then you can put in information of the different processes. Now, given no malware I have ever seen checks the integrity of the analysis tools it tries to uh, kill or validate, uh, currently this should work fine. The problem, I think, is that malware checks are unpredictable and sometimes malware will respond to analysis tools by getting rid of them instead of killing. Because some analysis tools, it might as well just get rid of. Okay, so I'm just going through the post, seeing if there's anything else really worth talking about here. So I think there's some cool stuff, like the fact that this is, fundamentally this is going to be, it's at least so far more far along than, uh, say, Cyber Scarecrow. The trouble is, and it hugely depends on what you do with your computer, in terms of whether this is recommendable at all, whether this is something I would strongly suggest you do not install. So th there is, if you are someone who doesn't use anything that's VM aware, how do you know? Do you play games with anti-cheats? Uh, actually, I would not expect something like Vanguard to even care. It's going to be more lesser uh, tools. Other examples, I, I know uh, FL Studio is VM protected. I don't, v VM protect is an anti analysis tool that usually blocks VMs, but not always. There's some other small software that might use anti analysis tools like the MIDA or VM protect uh, because they think it will prevent piracy. So there, there is some degree of unknowns, but realistically, most software does not care about being run in a virtual machine. If you do not use anything that doesn't, this will provide you a very small but potential security gain. I was not able to find an example that worked immediately, but that doesn't mean there are none. I, I can think of samples such as PySylon and many other rats that would in fact refuse to run on this, so it's not entirely useless. How much of a nuisance this varies? Uh, what is the price of it? It is $9.99 plus tax. Uh, and of course, uh, here you can... Uh, oh, oh, it's a subscription. I didn't read that on the checkout. Okay, so you install it here. Uh, if you wish to subscribe, you get 25% off the first year by using this code. Uh, and you can go here if you want to develop modules. Now, this is an important thing. We're not here to replace your existing security measures. We're offering an additional layer of protection by making advanced cyber deception. To me, that seems like a buzzword that I've never heard. I have only ever heard of trying to do the opposite, uh, which genuinely would be an incredibly cool project. I mean, you can kind of do that with Titan Hide and other uh, rootkit kernel drivers, but generally speaking, you are trying to conceal these things, not falsify them. But I, I can see the idea. It seems to be a trendy idea right now. Adolus was made with love in Japan. So, yeah, it's hard, very hard to recommend. Uh, to quote, to, I don't want to go full MKBHD. Very hard to recommend. Uh, it's also something that if you, like, honestly, I could recommend this more if you have some reason that being able to easily create executables with an arbitrary name is interesting to you. Uh, check it out. Otherwise, it's just kind of, it's tricky. I would suggest, the uh, biggest thing I could suggest tangentially is making the user experience better. Uh, if I have to sign in with my email address, do not make me give the license key I bought with the same email address. That's pointless. Uh, that's one thing you can fix easily. I can say the telemetry, they're, 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 not, they're not wrong. It is uh, very much anonymous. And this I kind of disagree with. I don't think it's worthwhile because... And this is kind of the thing I actually like about these projects, is if threats started 
building countermeasures to these projects. It would be much easier to conceal being a VM because I could just create a fake Dolus, and there we go. GG. It'd be, it'd be the Hyper-V method all over again. And uh, they're even making it source available for the sake of transparency. I respect that. I really do. I, I think they're trying to do a good thing. Whether they will be able to make this into something that will succeed, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to understand. I, I think for certain people, especially, maybe especially, honestly, the people who would benefit the most from this, if I had to name someone, is video game pirates. Not video game cheaters, but video game pirates are terribly served by antivirus, and this might be helpful to them. Uh, of course, buying the games instead of buying defenses might be also helpful, but that, that's kind of my take. So that's going to be all for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this idea. Uh, and of course, uh, thank you again for Andrew to commenting, uh, reaching out, telling me about this, and trying something new. That's all for me for now. Bye!